by saying that this demo had kind of started as a passion project. I um, am working on the design acceleration team at Grok, and I've always been very interested in pairing together music with technology. And being in the AI space, it's always been a passion of mine to bridge those two together, music with AI. One of the first passion projects I had done at Grok was looking at piano generative music. So we can train like an LSTM style network to learn classical piano and then have it generate new music. I had done that demo at a beer and demos, and then Mark Keeps had seen it and was very interested in what we could do um, further. And so this came about to Grok Jam. So Grok Jams is a full-fledged music generative application that is really built for uh, musicians and hobbyists that like to jam along with backing tracks. This way, Grok Jams enables the users from a few clicks of the app in order to generate new unique music that they can then play along with. So the app starts just with an uh, welcome introduction page and goes through each different sub app that we have access to. And I'll walk through all of those. The first search artists and songs page is really just the ability for the user to see what we have. All of this data that is presented on this screen is what we trained the neural networks on. And it also is the music that you can select in the sub apps like the generator, the blender, and the interpolator, which I'll go through individually. So as you can see, there's a drop down that enables you to search. It's thousands of artists that we have. As soon as you land on an artist that you're interested in, it will then populate all the songs that are available from that particular artist. So then on the next page, we have what was sort of the original idea for Grok Jam, and it's called the generator. And the generator's job is to just create a unique music backing track that artists and musicians can then play along with. We can start this particular app on the left-hand panel here, where it says options. We can first select a song style. Under song style, you'll have the ability to select different instruments. Is if we click the drop down, you'll see that there's already four instruments pre selected piano, guitar, bass, and drums. There's a fifth available instrument, strings, that we can add to the list. And we can also remove um, some of the pre selected ones if we'd like. So why don't we just start with, say, piano, bass, and drums? And then we can next choose a genre. And we have a variety of genres that the music data set. Um, that we train the networks on includes. And they're sorted by the availability. In other words, rock has the most songs, while world has the least amount of songs. So the further up in the list you go, the more uh, realistic uh, the characteristics of the generated music will match that particular genre. We also have random for those that don't like to make decisions and just want something to, to be ready. So let's just do rock, because it's one of my favorite genres. And then the second step is we have the ability to tune the model behavior. So the number of loops really just translates to how many seconds of audio are we actually going to be generating. So we have a default of five, which translates to roughly 40 seconds of music. And then we have this temperature of sequences. So for every sequence that's generated from our AI, we want this temperature to determine how much of a change occurs sequence to sequence. So a low temperature at the far left would indicate that most likely each sequence will be identical to the previous one. Contrast that to the far right at about two, we're asking it to go above and beyond um, what we call this latent space, which we can talk about too, um, which gets into the details of the machine learning model. And that will ask each sequence to try to change as much as it can sequence to sequence. So you'll get something new each time. And then lastly, we can just provide a title. So we can name this, for example, something simple like Rock Jam. You can click Generate Your Track. You can see it's running up top, but it doesn't take long because we're running all of this on Grok hardware. And it's a very low latency, high throughput type of application. We can see now that it shows up as song number two, as Rock Jam. Um, 
the app automatically populates this entry here, which is our player, with the latest generated track. So you can see it's going to be playing Rock Jam. And if we click play on this, we'll hear the new music. So you can hear that had the piano, bass, and drums as we requested. After your, you generate your track, you have the opportunity to download the audio track. So you can save it and play it on any external player. And then you also have the ability to download the MIDI track. The MIDI track will provide you the MIDI notes for each instrument in a separate track so that you can upload it to your favorite digital audio workstation and change the samples or play around with it from there. We also provide the song key. And this enables the user, if they just want to understand what key the song is being played in so that when they go to improvise or create a melody on top of it, they don't have to first find the key it's told to them here. And that defines what the Grok Jam generator can do. So now what we can do is go over to the Blender. Blender is one of my favorite sub apps or pages on this app. And the idea behind Blender is you can select two different songs. And what this particular app will do is blend them. It'll create a, a new song that has characteristics and qualities of the two originally selected tracks. So the way that this app works, same, we'll start at the left-hand panel. We'll select our instruments. We can just keep it at piano, bass, and drums for now. You can choose your first song. So here's where you can now have access to all the artists that uh, are available in the data set. Um, so we can collect, uh, click on any of these that we wait want to blend together. So maybe we'll take Thriller. Um, we also provide the sequence number. So what this means is that every song has a fixed number of sequences uh, that make up the, the whole song. If we want to blend a particular part of a song, we enable the user to do that by cycling through the different sequence numbers. And they can just listen to each sequence by clicking the play button here. And what that'll do is it'll let them know what particular sequence is going to be used to actually blend. So they can find a key point in the song that they really want to come out in their newly created track. So then the second step is to choose a second song. So the same process goes where you can click here. Maybe we'll do Mariah Carey, and we can choose a song, All I Want for Christmas. Of course, that's a, a, a very popular one. And we can do a similar thing, choose the sequence number. Now, one thing to note, too, is that as we listen to this preview, we can only hear drums and bass. And that's because this particular song, if we go up to our selected instruments, doesn't have any piano. In order to get the rest of that particular track, we would want to go ahead and select maybe guitar or strings to bring that out even further. And then similarly, we can choose a number of sequences that we want to blend. And then we can give it a, a title. So we chose Thriller and All I Want for Christmas. So maybe we can call it All I Want for Christmas is a Thriller. And then we can click Blend Your Track. It's running. And then there we go. It Similarly to the gener uh, generator app, it will populate the new song and we can play it from here. So this track, again, if we wanted more content, we would highlight more instruments in order to get the melodies and things like that into the track itself. So that is the Blender. Uh, the last app or sub page to consider is the Interpolator. This one's similar to the Blender except instead of blending the songs, it interpolates between them. So it's a similar process of starting with your instruments, starting with a, uh, an initial first beginning song. And this can uh, be anything, maybe something like off the wall, and we can listen to the samples. 
So this one obviously is heavy in piano. And then we can choose a second song. Maybe something by the Pop Sensations. We'll choose our sequence. And then we'll say close to you and I want it that way by so. Then we can click interpolate your track. And we'll see that it's going to start on our first song and then it will create new sequences until it reaches the last song. So as you listen to these sequences through, it, it, it's really neat because you'll be able to hear qualities of both songs as it finds its way to the second um, track. So those are the three pages that we have on the Grok Jams app, the generator, the blender, and the interpolator. And they all use the same underlying technology. What we've done is we've trained a series of variational autoencoders where each instrument, there's five total, has two different models that make up the VAE. The first part of the model is the encoder, and its job is to take a input of a high dimension and sort of compress it down to a latent space of a lower dimension. The second half of the model is the decoder, which will then sample from that latent space and sort of uncompress it on the output so that you get more back, you get back to your track. And so using this latent space is what enables us to have all of these very cool different spins on, on a core concept of generative music. So the generator enables us to find within that latent space where a particular genre exists and sample from it. And then that's where we get the decoded output. The blender will actually take both the input samples from track one and track two, find where those latent spaces are, and we can do all sorts of things like find the averages between them or add them together to do a, a vector arithmetic uh, latent space sampling and decode that. Lastly, in the interpolator, we're essentially taking that same concept of track one and track two's latent space and just traveling or walking from one to the other. And um, each instrument, again, has two parts of the model, the encoder and decoder. Both those parts are then compiled using our Grok compiler into a program. We can then take all those various programs, so there's going to be a total of 10, uh, two models per instrument. There's five instruments, so 10 total. And we can compile them with co-resident, the co-resident flag, which enables us to package up, we can fit up to six, of those models are three instruments on one Grok chip, and then that let, leaves the two remaining instruments for a second Grok chip. So using our co-residency, we can then have two Grok chips running this entire app uh, and a very low latency uh, implementation.